Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images and in this short video I'm going to look at printing photos, use of colour profiles, matching your screen to your print and other issues that people come across when they try and use printer profiles. Now, first of all I'm going to start off by saying you cannot ever match a screen and a print. They are two different technologies. This one, light comes out of it. Um, it's an RGB device, so it comes out a mixture of red, green, blue light. Prints are dyes or pigments on paper, or whatever, and they absorb light. And they produce color, perception of color for us, in a completely different way to how the light comes out of the screen. So at a fundamental technical level, you can never match screen and print. Now, there's more to it than that because uh, you make printer profiles and printer profiles, uh, they're either supplied by the paper manufacturers, paper suppliers, or even the printer makers supply some profiles with things. Profiles are sort of like little bits of code that translate between a screen view and a print view. So you make them by printing out lots of different colours, accurately measuring those colours with something like a spectrophotometer. Um, this is an i1 studio or CC studio as will be. Um, this makes profiles. Your profile goes into your printer software and apart from specifying the correct profile for your printer and paper type, you need know nothing about the complex maths that's going on behind the scenes. Makes no difference whatsoever. Uh, you do not need to know it. Also, I should of course mention if you're, if you're interested in getting good quality colour, then make sure your screen is calibrated as well, calibrated, profiled. You can either use a device like this, or this one was profiled and calibrated using an i1 display. Um, the device just measures the screen, and in the same way that a device like this measures a set of test prints that you make, you make a profile for um, the, the monitor. That also is completely invisible most of the time. The aim of colour management for myself is not about some spurious sense of perfection. It is about getting better quality colour, more consistent colour, right first time more often. Uh, it is not about getting everything to a some consistent state. Now, I mention that because um, quite a few people um, have asked me about colour management printing. And this image here, here is a print of it I made during some recent printer testing. Um, I've produced a profile from this. Now, it's a profile made using a lot more expensive kit than this device here, but it's essentially the same thing. It's just a little bit more accurate. It may make a difference occasionally, but it's the sort of stuff that you would use commercially. Now, there is a print made from that image. And they look broadly similar. Um, I'm hoping they look broadly similar on uh, this video because I've specifically set this monitor up with a very low colour temperature of only about 4000K to try and make have a white balance, similar white balance to the room here where you're seeing this print and what you're seeing on the screen there. Um, video has its own problems in recording colour and colour management and that's a whole different area. But Making a print, yeah, that print looks pretty much like that. That's you know, what I would expect. That's made on a fine art paper that's been profiled. Now, I have another print made on another fine art paper. In fact, uh, if I recall rightly, it's a more expensive, better quality paper. Not much in it, but it's a better paper. And this print does not look so much like this. Certainly doesn't have the intensity of colour that the other one does. Does that mean the profile for this is wrong? No. The profile for this particular paper reflects the characteristics of this paper in its ability to reproduce colour, tone, everything else I want into my print. The profile for this other paper represents the capabilities of this paper. Now, it's the capabilities of the paper with a particular printer and ink set 
That's the important thing to remember. So if you get a profile for this paper that I've made for a particular printer and you try and use it on a different printer, it won't work. You'll get a picture come out. I very much doubt it will look very good. Uh, that's because the profile is specific to the characteristics of the particular paper in a particular printer with particular inks. So another reason why if you go for cheap third party inks, apart from the fact they may fade, is that you'll need to make new paper profiles for everything. So uh, another reason I don't usually bother with them. But two prints, nothing wrong with either, but they look quite different. And if I wanted a colour, colour image like this, with bright colours, like this one has got, then I'd choose this paper. If I wanted a more muted look, I would choose the other paper. Well, you might say, well, but this is the real image. Well, it's not the real image. It's what I've taken out of the camera and it's been processed and it's been corrected. These are a mix of artificial lights lighting up this. So you're always going to have difficulty in reproducing some of these strong colours. If I want a really punchy colour print with lots of contrast, I print this on a glossy paper or a luster paper. Um, I wouldn't normally choose a matte art paper like this for a bright colourful image. Um, you choose the paper that matches it. Now, if I had this on a gloss paper, it would be even brighter and more brilliant than this. Does that mean this profile's wrong, that profile's wrong, the other? No, they're all right. The profiles are only giving you the best version that a particular paper can do. And you can see already we're having a split between an image I've got here and how it's reproduced on a paper and how choosing different papers makes a difference. Now, this particular image is one that's really obvious. It shows, it's one of my test images I use um, for when I'm testing printers and papers because I know the colours on this can perform very differently on very different papers. So I really want to check what differences there are in different things. One of the things to note though is that that particular image, very brightly coloured. What about this other image here? This was taken whilst I was driving across uh, one of the flat bits of Oregon one day, uh, longish lens, and here is a print of it. Now this is printed on a poster board. It's a matte photo paper. Print works very well um, and matches up rather well with what's on the screen. In fact, I prefer the yellow of the wheat field on this print to the yellow of the wheat field I see on the screen. There's a slight difference in it and I like how this print looks compared to the screen. Now, this one also brings out some of the detail in the tree here. So I've got that. Now, if I printed this particular image on this particular paper, that's what it looks like. I've made a profile for this, so I have a profile for this particular paper. If I printed that image on these two papers, the prints would actually look very similar. And you certainly wouldn't be able to put the two next to each other and tell as quickly between this image as to you know, the bright colours here, the muted colours here because this particular image would fit any of these papers. And I happen to know that that particular image doesn't look very good on a gloss or luster paper at all. Um, it looks far better on a matte or art paper. It's just how the image looks and what it looks. So it's a matter of picking the paper. So this also comes back to a question I often ask, how do I pick the right paper for my prints? It depends on your photos. It depends what you want to show. Some papers suit images better. So I would take for one like this, this particular paper here. I like this for some of my architectural shots of old buildings, particular stone buildings. Uh, works very well. This paper has excellent performance for black and white. Works really well. So that paper works well. There are some colour images that look good on that one, but they tend to be light muted images, much like this one here. Um, 
If I want bright colours, as I said, I'm more than likely I'll go for a lustre or a gloss finish paper, even a metallic finish paper. Remember, profiles are not there to produce the same looking prints. And this is a thing I've come across several times. People are quite surprised that prints look different and they assume there's something wrong with one of the profiles. No, papers differ. As another example, here's uh, I, a card I made. Now this is printed on an art paper, A4 art paper that comes pre-creased for making greetings cards, comes with envelopes. And in this particular one, I scanned this image from a watercolour painting made by a friend of mine who wanted to see if I could make some cards from it. Now I've scanned that image, I've processed that image, and then I've printed it with various adjustments, so I had to change the, change the hue slightly of some of the colours of this. And the idea of this was absolutely nothing to do with matching the screen. This was matching the watercolour print. And because the watercolour print is considerably larger than this, by the time I've reduced it down to this size, this looks a lot crisper and more detailed than the watercolour does itself, so it works very well. So in this instance, which I've got a profile for this paper here, what's on the screen matters not one jot, because what I'm matching this against is the scanned original. So there we've got thinking the screen really is only an intermediate stage in the making of a print like this, because it's the final print, what it looks like, and how does it compare to the original scanned artwork. So the screen has not no relevance there. And in a way, that is how I treat printing my photographs as well. Um, I'm looking for a print, a final print, that gives me a feel for the scene I was photographing and produces a print that matches my intentions. Now it helps if you know that you're making a print to start with because with practice you get to know the characteristics of different papers. So if I'm taking a picture I know that's going to be on black and white, I may think, am I going to print this on a textured paper or a smooth paper? Um, just things, the earlier you think about that, the late, you know, the results come through later. And I find that once you accept that the screen is no more than an intermediate stage between your source material and your final print, that makes a great difference and it frees you from a lot of constraints. Remember, colour management is there to make things work more consistently, more accurately. Now, accurately means that this doesn't come out green. The sky on this particular paper doesn't turn purple. That's the kind of accuracy that colour management does. The actual artistic look of what the picture feels like, what it looks like, that's up to you to decide how you want to do it. And it also means that sometimes you may need to edit a picture quite a bit um, on the screen to get a print that looks right. Classic example is sunsets where you may need to tweak levels, saturations, colours to get a good looking print because the difference between a, the oranges that you see and your camera may capture, and obviously you have to take a good photograph in the first place, but the differences between that, what it shows the screen, and what it comes out on a print are considerable. And that's the classic example I use of where what's on your screen is no more than an intermediate stage and maybe not the best looking image on the screen makes the best print but that's for you to decide um there we go now i hope that clears up a, a few aspects of how i view color management and how you use it and how you use it as part of your print making but i say above all if nothing else try and break that habit of thinking that your prints have to look like the screen they don't they have to look like a good print, and that's all that matters. Because when you show a print, somebody's not going to go, oh, yeah, that's good, but can I have a look at the screen as well to see how good the print is? No, nobody cares. It's about the print. Thank you.